I'm going to start. This is a really small group, so I'm going to let people ask questions while I'm going through, and I'll take a break, because I think it's a good way to do it, and it's possible to do it when you only got 10 people in the room. It makes it more enjoyable for me. So ask questions, and I think I can inspire you to ask questions. Um, this mod presentation is about the schema.org blueprints module for Drupal. Introduce myself. My name is Jacob Rockowitz. I want to make your life easier by solving complex problems with simple, well thought out solutions. You can find me at Jay Rockowitz on the web. And hopefully that's what you take away from this. I'm going to make a statement about the goal of this module and the presentation. The schema.org blueprints module provides perfect data structure, pristine APIs, and great SEO. And that's the goal of this module, to hit all three of those at once with ease. So there's some background, there's a background to this story, that I've been thinking about this for three years. And people are like, oh, this is the thing you keep talking about. And I'm like, well, no, I've written blog posts saying, I think this is a really good idea. And I've tried to make it happen with different teams, and I've seen it fail. Because I'm like, you've got to just use this as a foundation and plan your content types. And uh, I mean, the background story was we were going to go to Sitecore, and I was trying to get the team to do it. And they did do it, but then it was like these teams of developers trying to get the fields to map and the relationships to work, and frankly, Sitecore as a product couldn't support what schema.org specs out as structured data. So anyway, moving forward, something I, I feel strongly about is this, this module is providing another way for us to get off our individual content model and API islands. What I mean is, we each build our own website with our own data structure, and then if you need to integrate with another website, you have to call their API, figure out what the hell they did to define a blog post or define people on their site, or define even an event. What are they calling date, start date, end date, field underscore start date, start capital date. And it gets really, it's a mess. And if we can pick one spec and say, this is how we're going to structure data, when I go to your API, Start date is going to be start date. Or for first name and last name, actually that's not in the spec. It's uh, given name, surname, and family name. Because that's more universal. It's not just an American spec. So let's talk about schema.org. Who doesn't know what schema.org is? Because I can skip five slides. OK. I'm going to talk to the two of you and keep it really simple. It's a spec that was built by Google, Microsoft, and Yahoo to define structured data on the web. That means on a web page like the New York Times, when you go to the home page and look at the source code, there's just some data that says this is the content on the page. And it, if you go to an FAQ page, in the, in the markup, it'll say this is an FAQ. And when you start doing searches in Google and you see, you ask a question, you get the perfect answer, it's driven by this data. Um, all the big sites are using. This number, 10 million, doesn't mean what it really means. Any big site is using it. A good anecdotal story I was trying to explain to my 13-year-old while we were in San Francisco in a hotel, what the hell I'm doing. I said, I'm working on this crazy data thing. He's like, what? I don't get it. I said, look, we're sitting in this hotel. If I go to their web page, let's look at their web page, and we open up their web page, and I show her the data, and I'm like, this is what I'm doing. I'm building this data that this hotel is using to promote themselves, say what their openings are, what their closing, their amenities are. So it's all over the place. If you go to an enterprise site, they're using schema at this point. That's at the, the adoption level. And, and what it is, is it's just a definition of types of information made up of properties. And then there, you know, they, there's data types. What type of data? A date, an email. Well, actually, email is just a string, but dates. Boolean values. They have enumerations, which are just lists of things. Gender would be a common one where they start very basic. It's not very inclusive, but there's a gender type enumeration, male, female, and then you can add to it yourself in the spec that they've written out. And you can go to the website, and I definitely recommend doing it, clicking around. And the idea is this is just showing you that this is the massive hierarchy of information. You can go to an event. It gives you a list of properties. This is giving you a definition of a content type. It's telling you what the name of the fields are, the usage of the fields, and the data that goes into those fields. And in this case, it shows you what are the subtypes. What's another level of specificity to an event where you can say, I want a business event, and we'll come back to that. So schema.org first is kind of the, word, the way I'm describing this approach. And a schema.org first approach leverages schema.org as the foundation for building content models and using content models using structured data, which is API-first, standardized, and universal. 
This makes it easier for organizations to author and distribute content to multiple channels. If your content aligns with schema, anyone will understand it. They automatically, you automatically get the SEO that you know the search engines understand it, but your partners understand it because it's based on the fact that they could go to a website and read. The current approach in Drupal is to do schema.org last, and this is how every CMS is currently doing it. Um, and I'm not, this is not bad mouth in schema.org meta tag module, but what it does is it says, okay, you have a page, you need to add information to it. That's how people add meta tags. They lay it on top of the page that's there. But the properties are hard-coded and uses tokens for replacements. This is just an example of schema.org set up for an, an event using the meta tag module where you have to go in each property, map it, each field, get these data structures. It makes it very, it's very tedious and hard to support. So the schema.org blueprints module takes a schema.org first approach to building content models and structured data in Drupal. So there's, stepping back, learned a lot of lessons over the years with Webform and to really think out how I'm going to structure this module and break it down. So there's a core of the module that basically just gets an understanding of what schema.org is by pulling in their spec into Drupal and just setting up some key configuration settings, like how would you map data? What are the types of data you're gonna map? And then on top of that, I start, I'm starting to build out a series of other modules. And the two key ones that you have, almost every site's gonna to wanna to have, is turn on the report module in the UI. The report basically takes that data schema.org and makes it clearly available in Drupal. You're browsing schema.org data in Drupal. I did it as an exercise so that I fully understand what the hell's going on with schema.org, and you'll see some nuances that I had to sort out. And the UI allows administrators to associate schema.org types and properties to fieldable entity types in Drupal. So this is, this is I'm offering a lot of this. this. The goal of this next demo is to build out a website's base content types and information architecture in a few minutes, when typically when I've done it, if you don't, if you do it, old-fashioned approach where you go through every single content type and you start clicking and first you have to write a spec and go to every, create the content types, each field, set up the defaults. That takes hours and this is just going to be done in a few minutes. So, um, I'm going to take a sip of water. I'm talking fast. Mm. Hydrate or not. Yeah, but I got through the heart of it, and I, I don't mind pausing. I got through like most of the key things, the background information, in five minutes. So this will be good. I want to start off by I have to promote the Gen Admin theme. That's what you're going to see here, because I'm trying to build what's the next version of a Drupal website and what it would look like. And I think the Gen Admin theme is there. It's beautiful. It's clean. It's efficient. Um, this is like the Gen login page where you can kind of have your own co corporate branding on it. I'm going to log in. I'm going to start, I want to go really slow, and I'm going to let people ask questions. So let's talk about the reporting. So when you turn on the report, you get an about schema.org report. This is what you see on schema.org, but it's in Drupal. And the idea, one, it was to help me understand, and as a community, help us understand it. So down here, you can say, I'd like to look at the schema.org types. You can filter and search. Recipe is kind of fun to jump to. You can jump to it and get the information that you know on, you see on schema.org. I'm also tracking references, articles related to these content types, so as a community we could build out our knowledge of what's a proper way to structure a recipe, what, what are things to pay attention to. Um, and then it just lists out all the fields and the data types and you can click through and say, well, I want to understand more about, let's see, oh, here, oh, here, I'll do a search for fine, nutrition. Uh, okay, so for nutrition, for recipe, and this is an interesting nuance. They don't, a recipe can have multiple nutrition information pieces to it because let's say you, built, you were making a recipe for cereal, you could have it with milk or without milk. That's different nutrition, different values. So they have a relationship when you're specifying nutrition, we can go over, and this is all the information related to just the nutritional information. Keep in mind, it's an, op, it's an inherited system, so you get the base, you gotta browse around to get this. Um, Sometimes, I'm listing all the fields out alphabetically, but you can also click here and go to schema.org. And you can see, when you look at their spec on their site, because it's kind of a different goal, they show you exactly what the key pieces for nutrition information are. This is, these are the properties every site would want on a recipe they're describing. And click back. Um, 
The other thing in types is we want to understand the hierarchy. So everything starts with a thing. And I mean, this is stuff you're familiar with, but something I had to pull out is to recognize that you want to understand their intangibles, which are little pieces of data that you might have on your site. And the example would be defined term, and we'll get to that in a second. But that's a taxonomy term. That's not a dedicated entity. You have taxonomy terms associated with them, so you'd want to have that listed. Enumerations are just lists of things. These get pulled in, and I made it, I, first it was a taxonomy, and now it's just a drop down. So gender type, if I, and I don't love, you know, if someone created a good ticket to discuss this, but if you create gender for a person, you get male and female out of the box default, and then you can add values to it. Um, lastly, structure, and I'm starting to hint at what I'm gonna show you, and I'm not at that five, like that, I'm building a site in five minutes. Under structured values, I really like contact point, if I click through, a contact point is just a way you would contact someone, their office information, and then it lists out, well, do I want their phone number, email, fax, hours available at that point. This is stuff that the Stephen.org team has debated and figured out really well. This last, second to last tab, it's just names. And this is something that I had to sort out with Stephen.org. It has a different, different naming convention from Drupal. They have a limited number of characters using camel case, we use snake case, um, all lowercase with underscores, and we're limited to 32 characters. So this is a complex algorithm that you should never touch, but it's configurable, to basically truncate schema.org's names to work with Drupal and maintain a perfect relationship. So it just figures out how to get the character count down and makes a stable relationship between schema.org and Drupal. And it kind of future-proofs it, because if they add new properties, we have algorithms to say, well, if there's aspect at the end, we're going to change it to ASP. And I do not love abbreviations. It's like the root of all evil to me. But there is no other way around it in this situation. And at the same time, I want to emphasize something. No one ever sees anything that's listed here in terms of names. They see the schema.org name, which is unlimited, in their APIs or in the JSON ID. Um, last time, tracking references. So I spent a lot of time. Now I'm into the building and the fun part. I have so much time here, this is great. Okay, we're gonna build a site. I've installed a plain vanilla instance of Drupal. I'm gonna go up to the top, and for this demo, I have to start at low level pieces of content. That contact type I was talking about, you gotta have that first before you start creating people, because people relate to contact types, they have them within. So, I like paragraphs in this case, because paragraphs is really good at structuring data and maintaining these relationships. And these are all the examples of what I think could be good paragraphs types that we'd use, but for this example, I'm just going to use contact point. I'm going to spend a second on this and describe what we're looking at. This page intersects the content type creation form, adding a new content type, and every single add new field form into one UI. So what it's doing is, it's figuring out, you want to create a new paragraph content, a paragraph type in this case. Here's the name pulled from schema, here's the machine name. The description, there's a module to automatically pull in descriptions, so you don't even have to enter it. And we don't actually want to store these descriptions in the database because it's coming from schema.org. And then it pulls all the properties. There, we'll get to, we have plenty of time to do this. You, all of this is configurable. So there's a configuration to say, when I'm creating a contact point, these are the three properties I think we should start with. And I'm trying to set up reasonable defaults to the, for the community so that you can get running pretty quickly but all of it's configurable. So it figures out, I want a contact type that's a text field, email, and telephone. And these are all the map. The yellow is new fields are gonna be created. So uh, right here is the field creation form. And it's figuring out everything for you, from the type of field, the label, the machine name. And if you want unlimited values, it actually figures out that in certain situations you want unlimited values. Um, I'll try to find an example as I go through it. If you click Show Unmapped, you're going to see everything. And it's a lot. And frankly, that's why I did this toggle to... When you really get in here, you don't have to do anything other than... I just want to show you what... If I was doing the fast demo, you'd hit... You come here, you look, you scroll to the bottom, you hit Save. And now we have a contact type, contact point in Drupal. And now I want to take over some other... I have media installed, and I want to go over to the media image type, and I want to map it to schema.org. So when you go to manage fields, you get a schema.org tab, 
And all this is doing, and it's green because it's not creating any new fields. It's, you know, our media library aligns with schema.org perfectly. There's date created, date modified, there's an image asset, there's translations in language, there's the name, which maps to name, and then there's a thumbnail. And you hit save. And all this is doing is telling the system that our images align with schema.org, so when we're building schema.org content types out, go use, do a relationship to the media library. Um, lastly, to take over another area, I want to go to taxonomy and go to manage fields. So we have tags out of the box. I'm, not, I'm just using the default out of the box here, but obviously you could start from scratch. And all I'm doing here is saying, well, taxonomy terms align with defined terms, a list of terms in a set. They have defined term set. But once again, it maps perfectly. There's no new fields. It's basically description and name and term code matches to UUID. All configurable, nothing. I'm showing you opinions that could be changed in any way you want. Now let's get into the real part of the site. So I've framed out the site. Now we're going to come back to article and basic page, but what I'm doing is I have an add schema.org type, and I've set it up. This is a completely customizable landing page. My goal is to make kind of a landing page where if you're in a pitch meeting, for anyone who owns an agency, you could customize this and you're going to an automotive industry, you could have this just have automotive related types on the page and show them how you could build out and understand their information instantly. And keep in mind, like the automotive industry is a great one where they got heavily involved in schema.org. Everything related to selling a car, owning a car, the parts of a car are mapped out. You could, like Tesla could build out their entire website using schema.org. For the demo, I'm just going to start simple. Place, organization, person, and event. And you, this is, makes a lot of sense that a person can't exist without a place. They have to come from somewhere. An organization can't exist without a place. An organization is made up of people. So we're going through the order of precedence. Um, here, I'm just creating a place. All the fields, address, I have the address module installed, it maps address perfectly. So basically there's an algorithm here figuring out image, that's where that media, it's mapping to the media type and knowing that we want images. I'm going to go down, I'm going to hit save, and now we're going to do this really quick. Organization, I'm creating, and one of the things I'm trying to do out of the box is keep it simple. High level content types just need the baseline information. When you get to a more level of specificity, you're going to want to add more, more properties to it. So for an organization, you want to keep it simple. Just name, location, information. If you were doing a hospital, you'd want to include hours of operation and things like that. But you can't make those assumptions that an organization even has hours. I'm going to keep going. Uh -huh. Yeah, go. Um. So I suppose there's one of these fields, and, and for whatever reason, I don't want it. Can, can I just re remove it? Uh, yeah. It's, oh, high, it's highlighted in green. Can you show me? Oh, yeah. Oh, if you don't want, so if you don't want address to be even happening, you just say select, it goes away. So, yeah, I mean, you have full control over this. I mean, you have a lot. And the, so there's a lot going on here, but this is important. When I hit save, it creates the content type fields, empty displays, form modes for you but then you have full control. You can go off and do whatever you want with what's generated, and all that's really being stored is a mapping. And you could turn off the mapping. You'd be like, I don't want to have address mapped anymore. And um, if I change my mind later, can I come back to this page and restore it? Completely, yeah. Oh yeah, it figures out. It also Repeat figures out question. automatic relationships, yeah. Repeat the question for the Oh, sorry. If you come back to this page, can you relink your mappings? Yes, you can come back. And yeah, and I, I mean, we can play what? Well, we got a lot of time, so we can play with this. Um, you're starting to see relationships come in, and that example of um, this person works for an organization, that's why I created organization first, and it's figuring out that we want relationship, an entity reference to content. And there's actually a special plugin for, ent it's an entity, when you go to entity references, you can have a drop down menu. How do you want to, you want to use views? Do you want to use the default? There's a schema.org. Um, plug in in that drop down, and what it does is it figures out the content types that make sense. So it automatically does, like if you create an organization and then you create a hospital, for it works for it, it'll automatically know that the hospital is available, the organization is available, anything below organization, because this is a hierarchical tree. I want to emphasize that. 
then. And by the way, this is the report built into the admin UI. Um, at the bottom, oops, sorry. Close this. Oh, more. You can get a full sense of the full hierarchy. The organization is incredibly powerful in the scheme of where you can find any business. Um, anyway, I'm going to keep going. Oh, um, by the way, just a note here, it figured out that you want an unlimited works for organization now. Ah, machine readable name. Person. Give me one second. Add schema. Person. There it goes. By the way, is this taking a while? Because this is doing a massive amount of config generation. It's generating well, everything that's listed here, a content type with a dozen fields all at once, with all the entity displays, and you'll see that toward the end. Okay, lastly, okay, so we got to finish events. Events nice because we see dates getting mapped, start date, end date. Okay, and the last, whoop, sorry, I'm doing two more things here. I would like to take over article because it maps to schema.org perfectly. So I'm going to article. I've configured it to say if there's an article on the site, map it to schema.org's article. It's enhancing it with really common properties that make a lot of sense for articles. I've been asked to add alternative headline over and over again to articles because people want different headlines for teasers. Um, dedicated author field because usually the person creating the content isn't the author. And then it's just mapping existing fields. And this is where taxonomy is kicking in nicely because you have keywords. And the other one I want to kind of go in and take over is web page. And frankly, this is my favorite one. Because yes, you have a, a very simple page with a body. But what I like down here is these last three fields just show how much thought they put into what really is a web page or what's really important. Primary image of the page. Every page should have that. That's what you use on Twitter. That's what you use on Facebook. And then they figured out that you can't just have related links. You need to distinguish between Related links and significant links, and to me they mean different things. Significant links are, this is direct content that everyone should read, it's associated with the article you're reading. If it was like, in my case, a blog post about a doctor, a link to the doctor is a significant link. A link to other blog posts that kind of are related, those are related links. And I just appreciate that they've thought this out at this point. Um, and another example, I've been doing personalization. I would never personalize significant links, but I would personalize related links. Because significant links mean it's related to the content related. Uh, an algorithm could figure that out. I'm going to hit save. Okay, we've taken over all the content types, and now you've got to see this in action. So what I'm going to do is go over to develop, generate. And just to make it look a little better, I'm going to generate some terms. I'm going to go back to generate. I'm going to generate some media. I'm just trying to help this along, even since I feel like I have the time here. Uh, I'm going to generate some media, and the last thing, I'm going to generate some content. And I'm going to just be able to check all because everything's related to schema. So once we, and I like to do this little setting here because it gives us a hint on what we're looking at. Okay, so now we have a website filled with content, and let's start looking at some of these. So we have organization. This is all automatically generated. So this display is a very simple display. It uses field groups, uses field sets, uses information, contact points. You're starting to see a pattern for headless. Um, you go to edit, you get a perfect pristine node edit form with details elements. I, I'm going to get to it, but the descriptions from schema.org are pulled in automatically. So when you click here, an image is an item. This URL, you can change all this, but just like your node edit forms actually have descriptions and not just field names. Um, in terms of relationships, if I go back up to content, I think I like to point to event. You get all the relationships to different people, the dates are mapped. Um, and is there one? That, oh, article. Boom. And you have taxonomy terms. Your taxonomy terms are mapped. Okay. So that's the five minute demo of taking over an entire set of a schema, and now there's more to come. Okay, any questions? Okay. So when you're taking over a content type, if you've got a website that has existing data, existing notes already, um, 
it work seamlessly and just adds the new fields or? Yeah, it'll add the new fields. I mean, there's things like nuances that, um, this is, everything's customizable, it's kind of my mantra here, but the fields that are being created, and now it's good you're asking these questions because you're gonna get little pieces of extra information. So if I go to the content type, and we look at events, I made a decision to prefix the schema.org fields with schema underscore to distinguish them from fields, because there is a challenge here that you wanna have your data that you're distributing to schema.org, like this is my content. And then one of the challenges, even with headless, is what's your configuration? What's your extra metadata that doesn't align with schema.org? I frankly feel like having a distinguishing naming convention, field, schema, but you can map your existing fields. I mean, I think this is like, if I was going to an existing site, I'd probably opt to not use the schema underscore prefix and I'd go change it. In, it it's a, in the admin UI, you could say, I want all my fields to align. You do the mapping. And we'll get into the admin. You can see everything that's going on, audit, and you can even download the mappings for a content architecture review. Um, it's actually getting into, there's a lot more going on underneath the hood here. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot. Like the description thing, I'm giving you the hint, like you don't have to think about these descriptions anymore. When I go to edit, this is blank, and I, I'm still working on maybe I have to give someone a hint of what it is, but you don't have to think about the descriptions of your content types, your fields, because it's pulled from schema.org. If you type your own, this is a custom description. Here. I hit save, it will stop doing schema.org's description and put in your description. So that's this module. So there's two other things that are happening here. Oop, I went one slide too fast. APIs are automatically being created if you have JSON API turned on in the JSON API extras module. And RDF, which is deprecated underneath the hood, if we go to a content type and inspect it, and I think we're gonna to get to JSON LD in a second, but RDF's worth just noting, I did this as the first proof of concept where if you inspect the markup, this is gonna have RDFA. So it's attributes that search engines understand about. It. When we get to APIs, and we're gonna get into the admin stuff. So at the bottom of structure, I'm adding a schema.org to the menu item. The schema.org affects everything in structure that you could possibly this is everything we just created, and it's tracked here. And when I talk about APIs, if I go over to the event API, and keep in mind, the, even the endpoint is schema.org compliant, because it says API slash event, capital E, for the object. And when you get to the fields and properties, they all align with schema.org. So if you built Swagger documentation, you'd have schema def descriptions and definitions right there for the end user. Also, I just loved the JSON API extra module. No extra fields are being exposed here. That's important with APIs, lesson learned. It's like you only want to expose data you want people to use. And I think in this case, you want just your schema data available. Um, going on. So the big thing for SEO. So we talked about structured data, um, APIs, and now let's talk about SEO. So for good SEO, you want your own LD. That's your own link data underneath, hidden in your markup, and it's add. So there's a JSON LD module that adds schema.org structured data, it's own LD to the head of your page, and then there's some other sub modules. There's an endpoint module because if you're doing headless, you might actually want to just call that data into a headless system, and then there's a preview. So let's go there. Back to our content. I'll keep using this event. So at the bottom is JSON LD data. This is all SEO friendly data. I actually just added a schema.org breadcrumb module that takes the breadcrumbs in Drupal and brings it into this JSON LD. And this is pristine. By the way, what, right now what I'm doing is taking every relationship in this data packet. So you come to this page and you know every single piece of information someone's reading. It might, we might limit the nesting, but you can copy this, you can pull it over, you can validate it. Oh, I just got hit by the bug that I hate. Well, I've seen this before, and I tried to fix it. Okay, trust me. Uh, there's some weird nuance here where that bug's kicking in because it's in full screen mode. Because when I tried to, I was like, okay, it's going to break during the presentation. I, I 
worked on it, it was working fine. Um, try one more time, because it's really cool to see. I give up. Yeah, I give up. And I do know cutting and pasting, so this is enhanced just enough, like this is meant to, this you can't cut and paste into that validator because it's enhanced, and I'm trying to clean it up and hyperlink things and, and click around. Um, lastly on this, that's it, let's see. Yep, the preview's there. Um, so we're gonna just wrap up a little bit in this. I got another 15 minutes. Yeah, we got 15 minutes, so I'm gonna wrap it up in five. I just wanted, what are the benefits here? It's standardization, simplification, and acceleration. It just makes things easier to understand. There's a lot less thinking going on when you're building a site here. You're, you're, you're leveraging schema.org, an open and established standard, and it just makes it easier for organizations to create a content information architecture that's easy, that's simple for API consumers and search engines to understand. And just, yeah, it gets to simplification, having a standard, standardized content information architecture removes the challenge of naming and relating things. It goes away. You don't have to, I, I, when I look at schema.org, I'd say at least 80% of what's on there I've used on a site. Maybe there's 20% snowflakes out there. And even then, schema.org is an open spec that you can extend. So technically you should be able to use schema.org completely. Um, so yeah, it's, it makes, it's just simpler and acceleration. It all leads to just faster development. I just did something. I just did something that takes hours in a few minutes, and you can do it in a few seconds once we get down to it. Um, organizations can think less about their data structure and focus more on their content and user experience. So, I I, I feel like I don't. Like we can go a lot into configuration, but I just want to emphasize everything you saw here is configurable. Everything. So yeah, I'm trying to make assumptions to get things off the ground, but you can go and change that. Or as a community, we can keep improving it. So for example, that list of recommended types, the default fields that were mapped, you can go customize. Um, you can have global settings. So if you get a field type that's image, you can say whenever there's an image, I want it to go to an image object. Um, if there's works for, every works for property should be unlimited. That makes perfect sense. And then with the Sony API and the Sony LD, all that pristine AP, you know, the paths and stuff like that, that's configurable. For example, with the API level, I really don't want an API to say API slash node. That looks dumb. It should be API slash content. So that's what, you know, that, you, have, you can configure that. Um, the demo here is everything to configure this is tucked here. So this is showing us all, the, all our mappings. You can actually click show details and see exactly what's going on, where, what are the relationships, what are the properties. For your content architects, I'm not gonna click download, I'll show it to you. You can click download and get this in a spreadsheet. Conceptually, because I can get this data into a spreadsheet, you probably can bring it back. So you could give the spreadsheet to someone and say, what do you want the site to look like? Import it and then have it out of the box. The mapping types are these definitions. So that's what, when we go to by the way, this show details is ridiculously overwhelming because it's showing, I'm gonna hide it because you can go in and basically tweak exactly how each entity type is gonna work in Drupal. So commerce might have to go in and decide, well, we wanna recommend these types. I'm using the common pipe pattern in Drupal. It's not the prettiest thing, but basically these are all the groupings. So when I showed you that magic with article and page mapping the schema.org types, that's what's done right here. If you have different, so there's, it's doing inheritance. So you, this is a whole spec of every single, like when I'm generating a schema.org type for recipe, I want this level of specificity. I want all these properties pulled in. Um, events, I didn't do subtyping, I didn't show it to you, but in event, and frankly I will, it's catching something about the event content type, which I'll just show you. If I go to events, manage fields, it supports a subtyping pattern because if I go over to here, it means when you create this event, you can say you want it to be a little more specific. I would like to create a business event. And in the spec of schema.org, there's no extra properties to a business event. It's literally the type, the subtype is another level of specificity. 
So you don't really, we don't need to have a site filled with business events, children's events. We could have one event content type that then maps potentially to all those subtypes and events. Um, okay. Any questions about, do people get this level of configuration here? Please, because I so, can um, go on. Sam, Creating content types with custom fields, and I'm not too familiar with schema.org, so I, I map it to schema.org properties. And later on, I think, oh, that wasn't the correct properties. Can I remap those properties to fields? Yeah. I, I mean, the one thing. Repeat the question. Okay. Can, once you create a site, and if you get something off, can you remap those properties to different fields? Yes. But a field is a field. Like, there's some nuances here where I'm very careful about. Like, the example is. Um, when I'm generating the JSON API, and you turn off the mapping, I'm not going into JSON API and touching that 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 data that's mapped because that would be a really bad practice. So you you have to be you know you have to play with the system and get comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is we just have to be really careful not to lose data. And that's definitely and that's one of the things I don't do in this admin UI that that rich form. You can't delete a field. You have to go over to the other interface and delete a field and get the warning mm -hmm. and go through that. And frankly. Most of the configuration is done in the field UI and not in the schema.org tab. That's just to do the mapping and the creation. Um, yeah, I'm just talking about the, the mapping of the property yeah. to make sure it aligns with more with schema.org. You want to do an example of reassigning, like removing it, re adding, remapping a field? It's like okay. how you, you know, once you've already mapped, say, that, you know, the name or something of a person. Oh, well, I can show you. And it. Yeah, I mean, I also, you know, what's an interesting one to show you is like, if we just did the wrong field and we have the old data and we're like working on sorting this out, if I don't like this attendee and how it's mapped, you can go in and add a new field here. And you are going to get a machine name that conflicts, but attendee updated will create, sorry, the new field. Does this get closer to answering your question? Well, it's, it's more like, um, like for, so um, we have you know, profile pages, person pages mm -hmm. for faculty, and we have a bunch of custom fields. So, you know, special interests, say that's a custom field. Yeah. Um, and say I map it to something in schema.org. I don't want to delete the field, but later on I realize, oh, this other property is more accurate for oh, yeah. this field. Absolutely. So I just want to change the property. I don't want to delete the field or create a new field. You could definitely do that. I haven't had that use case, so you'd have to go in, you'd go to the property and point to the new field. That That's your, literally, you create. But can I use the same field and give it a different property? Yeah, okay. that's what, oh, so think about it this way. We're talking about this attendee. When I go to field type, this is all the field types, but then if I go up here, this is all the fields, all your internal properties. You can map it to anything that exists. So, and then keep in mind that I'm also, opening up base fields. This is configurable too, because there's some just like revision UID is not a base field that makes any sense to schema.org, so I kind of suppressed it here. You can make that decision, but yeah, you can map to anything you've created somewhere else. Yeah, I, frankly, yeah, you've got enough flexibility there. Um, what else? Yeah, I, I just wanna, it's like hard to say you can walk through every single setting, because then you go over here, and basically, think about it, it just breaks down your global settings, your types, your properties, your names. When I said that thing about the APIs, here's, here's the fields and core that I always want in an API, line code and status, which is a no-brainer. I don't want other core fields bleeding through. And then this is the fixing of, well, I really don't want to use core names. I want to use, not taxonomy underscore term and name, but the word term. Um, keep going. That admin UI is so complex that sometimes you can just go into the YAML and make these changes very easily. Like this is the YAML for recommended schema types, that landing page, and it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. And when I said you could do this in five seconds, there's a, if you're starting from scratch and you really thought out your architecture and you're like, I had it configured properly, you can actually script it all in Drush. So that in a Drush command, so this Drush, what you're seeing here right now is the entire demo I just gave you. It goes through and says, take over, create the paragraph contact point, create. When you say create type and media image object, if it's existing already, it already exists, it just does the mapping. It doesn't create anything. And it just runs through. And so I personally see a workflow where you kind of do a lot of prototyping while you're, if on a new site, you would just keep prototyping and fill out the architecture and try to get it to a point where the editors and reviewers are like, this is really close. 
and then you export all your config and then you do all your customization on top of it. And keep in mind, everything has alter hooks, so you can actually go into this process and start tweaking it. I'm going to skip this. Take this for a spin. I need people to try it out. I need people to really figure out if this is a viable approach. This is going to work as I hope. Um, download, Composer, Simply Test Me. I mean, we've got to improve it. I think one of the challenges is I'm going after a lot of information here. So we have to define what types we're going to support. We're going to support all schema.org types. That's a given. But when you get to the type, what are the default properties and relationships we want to encourage people to use? and try to get them as close as reasonably possible, knowing that we can't hit every sector perfectly, but we can probably get close. Um, are we on time? Oh, okay, I got um, I'm wrapping up. This is not even have, does not have an alpha release, and it shouldn't, because I keep tearing things out that would just piss people off and starting over. I'm hoping to get an alpha at some point where the key APIs, we can start out, I'll give a concrete developer example on all that JSON LD was targeting entities. So when you rendered an event, I'd like generate the JSON LD for the event, but then I realized, okay, I want to get breadcrumbs to work. Well, that's a route match system. So I had to just refactor, I did it in the last day or two, refactored everything so JSON LD is based on the route. So that makes it very, very, very flexible. And it also exposes the possibility that, I don't know if you have a route that's pointing to a layout, <laughs> it could figure out all the schema.org types associated with it. Like one of the things I want to sort out is if you have embedded entities in an article, how do we extract that data into the schema, that, the, the JSON LD that we're going to share? It's not rocket science, it's just like you got to figure out the right layers of the architecture. Right? You just scan that mark and be like, oh, here's all the UUIDs for media objects. Let's pull them out and list them. Um, yep, and this is kind of, I, I feel like alpha will come when the baseline scheme types, also these sub-modules that I'm creating, what's, what's really essentially needed, it's close. It, the, I think I'm creating enough sub-modules to test some theories, like that whole thing I just said about media, I have to create a schema.org JSON LD embed module. And once that works, I'll know, and one of the challenges, you want to make it easy for developers to augment this. We're not going to hit 100%, we're going to hit like 60, 75% will work perfectly, and then a developer should be able to easily write a hook and be like, I'd like to enhance this field, or I'd like to use this custom field, and I'd like to you know, bring that data in. I mean, we were just talking about there's like five different ways to do groups of fields. So we can't, we can't cover all of them, so we just have to provide hooks to support it. Um, people have been asking questions all along. I added these slides to just be like, there's pros here. Structured data, standard naming conventions, well-defined relationships, ability to extend and grow with schema.org. And it's been around for 10 years, which it's going strong. It's taken over most of the schemas on the web. I'll throw out a theory, a theory that I'm coming to that schema.org will supersede metadata in the near future. Because you have structured data, why do you need meta tags to say what the primary image is for Twitter, Facebook, Yahoo, all these places? Everyone's like got their own system. This is structured data. This is a definition of what's on the page. Um, but the cons. It's, it can get overly complex. There's some, the naming convention challenges there. Too many relationships. I have done work to reduce them. And then we are tied to the growth and decisions of schema.org. But I want to leave you with what I said from the beginning. And I hope I proved that this, this module is, is getting there. It provides perfect data structures for schema using schema.org, pristine APIs for JSON API, and great SEO using JSON MD. That's it. I left two minutes, so. Okay, thank you. So, so you mentioned that events has subtypes of business events, mm -hmm. events, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. If I actually want those, I, I guess I have the old decision of do I make separate content types yeah. for them that are all the same, or do I add a type field mm -hmm. to the event? The subtype field is automatically added. So that's taken care of if you want to do that subtyping. That's built in. I, I skipped over it, but it's really like when you go to add an event, you have a drop down to the subtype. Or you can create those individual sub events. It's really either way you want to go. I, I personally, I've used subtyping a lot over the years. 
And I find it, if it's simple, it's a really stable path. Like you, you know, this is all based on a lot of stuff I've done before, because it's like the field is field underscore event underscore subtype. And you can do really great views queries off of that. It's very, you know, very, you know, very simple to kind of trigger off of that. Does that help answer the question on subtype? I should repeat the questions. Any other questions? Or, I'm sorry, I might not have heard. In this presentation, did you answer the question what? of um, um, existing sites? Existing sites could map, because in the demo, I'm showing you that I'm taking article and page, which is in core, and mapping it to schema.org. So you can use it for existing sites. I think I'm still wrapping my head around um, complex data structures and relationships, how to get that to work. I think for existing sites, you're going to have to massage it a little bit with some AP. You're going to have to like write some custom code to just like get your existing data structure to align. Um, keep in mind there's things like I'm tracking all these different um, modules, like there's the field token module, which is really useful in this case, because let's say you had an existing site and you had data that wasn't exactly lining up, you could create a field token and map that. Or you could use the computed, you know, for, uh, the computed field to do some of the mapping. So I think for existing sites they can leverage it. it I'm unsure, I haven't, Personally, you know, we've worked together a, a while. Like, we never use the schema.org meta tag module because it feels overwhelming to map all those individual fields using tokens. Like, it's easier just to write the code. Um, I think we're at time, so you guys can just pull me aside and ask any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Done. Oh, red button.